for sure, but I'm going to find out. Give me my card and you can send me an email and say, hey, what did you find out? Any other questions on sharpening? So I'm going to cover one more topic right quick, and that's scrapers. So scrapers, I don't typically recommend to woodworkers in North America because we don't often need them with our timbers, right? Like I said, our timbers, our, our wildest timbers are like your mildest timbers. I mean, that's not quite, that might be a slight exaggeration. But there certainly is, um, there certainly is a difference. I know that this isn't, this is Jara. Jara? Jara. 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 Jara, Mike. There you go. Yeah. Um, but it's hard enough to scrape. If you get too soft a wood, it doesn't scrape very well. Okay? So. That's a weird noise. What is that? Drop there. <laughs> Drop there. <laughs> Jeez. A hard scraper is just a piece of spring steel, and it works really well for getting good results on harder woods. The nice thing about a scraping cut is that it doesn't um, doesn't matter what grain direction you work in. So the easiest way to do this is to take a file, right? And you're going to joint the edge of this with the file so that it's about 90 degrees, okay? It's usually easier if it's in a vise, right? But if you're careful about how you're holding things, um, it works pretty well, okay? Once you get that jointed so that it's nice and flat, you turn the file perpendicular and you do what's called draw filing. Basically, you're skewing the cutting action of the file, right? So that you're getting a nice straight cut all the way across, and that actually puts a higher polish on that blade because the draw filing does that. The other machinist technique is that you, you fill the file with uh, chalk, with a piece of chalk, and that takes up the size of the gullet, and that will actually cut finer. So it's kind of a neat, neat way to do it. So typically what people do when they put a hook on there, which is where you're, when you're using one of these, you actually want to bend the metal over just a little bit at the edge to create a hook. What happens is, is people put it in a vise and then they lean on it. And they put what I call is the tsunami hook. It's this like massive curl at the tip. And what that means is, is that to get it to cut, you got to really lean this thing down to get it to work. And it's not comfortable to use that way. Right? So what I tell people is what I learned from uh, a chairmaker in the United States named Brian Boggs. Um, he said to turn the burr with a scraper in your hand, not in a vise, because you can't push hard enough down on it to cause that problem. So you also want to lubricate the steel a little bit so that the hardened, um, the hardened burnisher doesn't gall the steel. Okay, which means like it, it like grinds into the steel and ruins it. Okay? Best source of uh, light lubricant? Side of your nose. Put a little bit of lube on there. And then I start to rub this back and forth across that edge with moderate pressure. And then I slowly start to raise the handle until I get to about 10 or 15 degrees. Okay? That's it. I think I've got a there. You're getting shaved. Okay, I've done other techniques where you draw the steel out and you mushroom the steel and then you then you turn the burr and all that other stuff. I just find that all that extra work work hardens the steel too much, and then you get a fragile burr, which I don't think is ideal because then you have to refresh it all the time you're back to the file. Okay, this will work just fine for quite a while. Okay, 
you want it to spice it into yeah it does, yeah yeah and it doesn't matter which way you go in the grain okay I will warn you though this gets warm so get some guard tape and wrap your thumbs because you'll burn your thumbs so um, what happens here is that if you start to lose that edge, now all you have to do is just put one on again. And because you didn't do all those extra steps to start with, you can do about four or five subsequent sharpenings before this gets too hard to turn. Once that happens, you go back to the file. You rip that steel off and you're done. And you just carry on again. Some people like to stone the edge of the scraper, right, on the stone. I find that, like I did, I didn't, I only learned that draw filing technique about two months ago. And I learned it from one of our guys in, in the shop who's like an incredible machinist. And he always said, why don't you try to bat, because I was actually doing it, I was sharpening it on a thousand grit stone, he goes, why do you do that? And I said, well, because I want a nice polish on the edge, he says, just draw file it. I said, well, how is that? He comes, well, come with me. And so he showed me how to draw a file, and I was like, that's brilliant. I'm never stoning these things again. It works well. This is just a, this is just a mill file, a single cut mill file. So, I mean, they're pretty cheap. Um, I know that uh, Carpetech carries them. Uh, I'd be surprised if Bunnings didn't carry them, to be quite honest. They're pretty common. They're perfect for sharpening uh, uh, garden implements, right? Like spades. Not a lot of people know that you're supposed to sharpen your spade. My spades are sharp. Because <laughs> when you're gardening and you're cutting in the grass, you want it to be sharp. That's sharpening a flat scraper. What about the curved scraper? The curved scraper, instead of doing that multiple thing back and forth, what you have to do is you have to grab onto this and you have to pair. You have to pair material, right? So instead of just being able to go whip, 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 like this, you have to go and you have to pair the hook on. That's, so, all, that's on the inside? On the inside. inside. On the outside, outside you can inside. just follow the curve and then slowly start to tip tip that up. Side Sorry? Side yeah, filing's a little bit more difficult. Filing, you need to get a, what's called a rat tail file, which looks a lot like this, but it's a single cut. Uh, mill file, and you have to kind of, it's a little bit more difficult, yeah, but it works the same way, just, yeah, you have to twist it and, and, and kind of go this way and this way at the same time, right, and it works, yeah, and a, and a, a burnisher, this one's nice because it's what's referred to as a teeth drop, or a teardrop, pardon me, and what that does is that you always want to use the widest part of the burnisher that you can. So, if I can put this on, on this big bonkin flat here, right, that's the ideal situation, right? Because if I use the narrow bit, you, in, you run into the uh, possibility of you galling the steel, right? But, when we were just talking about those curves, you want that thin bit to pair. So the nice thing about this is that it's got all the different profiles on it so that you have one tool. Right, some folks will use a, uh, some folks will use a uh, old dead drill bit. Right, if you take a quarter inch drill bit and it's not, it's not sharp anymore, you just take a block of wood and you drill that drill bit into the block of wood and then leave it there <laughs> until the flutes are buried. Right, once the flutes are buried, then you usually end up with about that much sticking up at the top, and that's hardened steel, that's high speed steel. The steel for a burnisher only needs to be harder than the card scraper, which isn't very hard to do because card scrapers are pretty soft as far as steel is going. And you just need that so that it'll just, you know what I mean? The old boys used to just use a, uh, a screwdriver, but they don't make screwdrivers anymore with hardened shafts. The tips are hardened, depending. <laughs> but the old ones used to be hardened right, right up the shaft, so you could use those as a, as a burnisher. Don't try it now, though. What you'll do is end up with a screwdriver shaft that's got a bunch of, uh, 
bunch of lines and marks through it. So all your branches have that tier right section? Yeah, uh, well we only make one burnisher really. We also make another burnisher that is like really, really short and very, very small, and that's designed to get into tiny little card scrapers, but unless you're using those card scrapers, you don't need it. This is a great all-around tool. And the nice thing too, like another thing that's nice with a burnisher is that when it's is that it's highly polished. Because then you don't abrade any steel. Right? So you don't want uh, you don't want a rough finish on a burnisher. So these ones are finely polished so that they're nice and smooth. Yeah. So that's the card scraper. You know what I mean? Takes nice beautiful shavings off of fairly hard woods and grain direction no longer is a problem. Neither is figure. Right? Like I mean, uh, when I was at Kuroi, uh, a gentleman came up and said, oh yeah, here, try a bit of this, you know, river red gum. And I'm like, I looked at it and I thought, man, that looks cantankerous. So I tried it with the hand plane. It just laughed. And so I switched to a scraper and a scraping plane. And I started going at it, and I got a decent polish on it. And they're like, oh my god, how'd you do that? He thought he was going to stop me. On a curved piece of it, do you scrape downhill? Yep. Does that matter? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 because otherwise it's like scraping in great. It doesn't turn out well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because it'll still grab onto it, right? You'll get tarot. Yeah, so you always work downhill in curves. Um, you know what I mean? On flat boards where you're going with or against the grain, it's not such a big deal, but if you're doing like a cabriole leg or something like that, you better observe that because you'll end up with a mess. Because you've got it's more end grain then at that point, right? As you make those you make those severe cuts on the knee, right? That bit that comes underneath and then back out again. If you go uphill on that, you know, you'll have a hot mess on your hands and a lot of swearing. Needs drinking whiskey too, actually, which isn't completely a bad thing. We have some wonderful Canadian whiskeys where I live. So the one downfall to the card scraper is this, it has no soles.